we use this word W I I F M. That means what is in it for me? That's what the world is asking. So my prelude to this message is this: What do you have to give the world? Very dangerous question. But I want to just make you ponder this important question because many of us are very happy attending Sunday service, being a part of a Bible study and contribution to a ministry somewhere out there and then we are very satisfied but I want to tell you today you are called to do much more and be a part of a greater plan and purposes of God and what is that you that you have that God has given you that you are able to sharpen to a degree that when you go to the world the world will recognize that on your life and the Bible makes it very clear that the Lord gave his uh, you know his servants Jesus he gave his servants his goods and then he says go ahead take take what I gave you and make it profitable somebody say profitable very important we are called to be profitable in the world and so you need to be profitable so what does it mean you're profitable you take what God gave you use it the one who had five made a ten praise God for that and some of us are wondering the one with two asks and looks at the one with the five and says this guy got five I got two the Lord is unfair you must be so happy you got two because the more he gives you the more you're responsible for the one with the one should be thrilled praise the Lord I have only one praise God I can concentrate on only one if you had five you had a lot of more work to do the one with the one the Bible says he went that means he took some steps burned some calories and he did the job of making a hole and burying that one single talent am I right on that hmm. and then when the master came he asked an account of what happened to the stuff I gave you so remember this is a you know this is a kind of a template of what the Lord is going to do I'm here to tell you every single one of you the Lord has invested something inside you your amen can be louder right the angels are witnessing your amen so amen to that so you whether you like it or not there's something hidden inside you that is why every greatness inside you must be unearthed gold is not found on the surface oil is not found in the surface it has to be unearthed so when you come to this world you come you have to dig inside of you to figure out what God has put inside you do you understand that that takes diligence that takes time that takes perseverance and many other things just to figure out and bring to surface what God has put inside you so greatness is found inside you amen to that so, this man with the one talent he decided to do something he decided to bury his talent and when the master came and the master says please can you give me an account of whatever you've done and the man says sure I will give back to you what you gave back to me he never squandered what was given to him but he gave it back but the master said you could have taken the same thing gone to the bank deposited in the bank and I would have collected my interest in due time am I right on that now the question is this listen the effort to dig a hole and to put this this talent inside the ground was greater an effort rather than go to the bank and give it to the bankers so my question is are you spending all your energies and sweating it out in the system of this world where nothing is it's going to give you nothing but if you take the same talent and what God has given you and translate it into the kingdom of God the master will truly appreciate it one of the great preachers in town I remember he was telling us a story about how he had to go to a certain place in Africa to uh, do a ministry and as he passed uh, you know passed by he saw a big huge graveyard and after the graveyard was you know then the church and in the church he's having a meeting and then he asked this group of people sitting in front of him uh, excuse me what do you think is the wealthiest place on planet earth what is the wealthiest place on planet earth in your estimation anything Kuwait you're 100% right Kuwait the, the rich oil fields of Kuwait is expensive amen okay great anybody else Dubai obviously I mean the gold is which is hanging in the Dubai malls Singapore true because one square meter is trillions right 
so he asked them this question and many of them gave their responses and he said uh, all that is true but i want to introduce you to a, the, the most wealthiest place on planet earth and then he said to them when i came to this this building to address you i passed by a graveyard and the truth is the graveyard is the most wealthiest place on planet earth and everybody said what are you talking about man he said listen every single one of us have come to this world fully loaded all right i use the word fully loaded everything that you need to function on planet earth has been put inside you before you were released to the earth all right my ipad ipad came fully loaded i'm not running for the charger afterwards it's all given to me so when you came on earth you are fully loaded and when you came to the earth fully loaded unfortunately many of the people who have died and gone they didn't even discover their greatness but they died carrying that wealth inside them and they empowered the grave so imagine thousands and thousands of people buried with greatness inside them but never released them and therefore he says that is the richest place on planet earth so my admonition to you is please die empty don't empower it any further than it is already empowered so for this to happen in our life the lord has given us certain systems that will work they are called systems and i will give you the four systems but i will not have time to explain all the four maybe we'll stick with one or two remember what jesus said in his words he says i send you like well, like sheep among wolves am i right on that that means the you're supposed to be like a sheep go in front in, in, the, in the midst of wolves convince them and slowly step out so when we go into the world we are not there to intimidate them sorry back in india as i was a small boy uh, we had preachers who have really fired up for the lord uh, preaching with their megaphones early in the morning at 5 30 on their bicycles the message was turn or burn some of them responded today if you say turn or burn they will burn you the message is immortal the message is cannot be changed altered but the methodology must change so today you can't do what was happening 10 years ago we need to change so when heaven is inside you on planet earth what have you been doing with the resources of heaven inside you on this earth so take your light out and whatever light that you have will make sense make significance will you say amen the lord has given us aids when i say aids systems in place for us to let our light shine the number one is what i call the system the system of the cosmos the cosmos is k-o-s-m-o-s -O -S. the system let me explain this is one of the beautiful things i'll explain that now number two is called a system of divine helpers these are systems god has incorporated that we will rise and let what is inside us come outside number three is the system of sowing and reaping all of us probably know that we're not going to talk about it and number four is like what i call the system of honor all right it's a system of honor so let me just give you one liner of each and spend time on the first one what is the system of honor going backwards the system of honor is to acknowledge and recognize the greatness of a particular thing and give it that due respect for example the gravity i need to give it honor just because i don't believe in gravity and if i jump off this building gravity will do its job i need to honor this system so anything that is placed around you give it the due honor that's why the lord is worthy of praise he's honorable why because he's due the worth that's why it's important to honor pastors who are above you oh why should i no no it's an honor when you honor God honors you this is a very simple uh, statement which is prescribed in the Bible it's not about what you feel it's about the system of honor so what you honor you will be honored the next one is of course the system of sowing and reaping we, we, we know it we do not want to talk about it but let me just touch on a few things and go what you sow you will reap 100% it's not just the good it's anything that you sow you will reap mm, that's a serious warning some of we think, you know, only the good will be honored, the bad, uh, no, no. Well, Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 onwards, let's not go there. I asked somebody the other day, a young man, what are you doing? He says, I'm doing nothing. Now, based on the law of sowing and reaping, 
you sow nothing, you get nothing back a hundred times. Nothing has got value. Remember what you sow, you'll reap. Number two, you never reap in the same season, you always reap in the next season. When I did drugs, wow, I said, my body is still fine. When it will not manifest then, it will manifest later. But praise the Lord, I'm well. Thank God for His mercy. Number three, whatever you sow, you're going to get it back in many times more, in more quantum. What you see as a seed is basically a forest. Inside a seed is a forest. Provided you give it the right environment. The fourth thing about the seed, it's very important. If you sow tomatoes, you'll get tomatoes. Don't be deceived. You're not going to get something else. Anything you sow, it's the same kind which will replicate itself. The next one, I let me touch and go, is a system of destiny helpers. These are all systems God has placed in our life to let our light shine. You know, God places people in your life to just to lift you up. And some of them, yesterday I was discussing, there are certain people who connect us to connect us to somebody. And I don't know how we got connected with Pastor Xavier. I mean, we just, you know, in, in, in the other meeting, somebody connected me to a particular ministry. And that's the reason I was here. I, I went with this church to, uh, uh, to JB and we finished the camp and I came back. Now, interesting, the person who connected us together is no more in the radar. No more in the radar. She just did the, did the connection and she disappeared. And now I'm in touch with that church. And they've invited me multiple times. So in life, God places people as friends. Just come and help you. Some of them may not come with finances. They will come to support. They are destiny helpers. They will just come to support you. They may not have the finances to help you, but they're there like strong towers to assist you. So thank, be thankful for these destiny helpers. Hmm. Some of the destiny helpers can only give you money. That's a good thing too, because we need money in this world, right? Some of them bless your heart. They give you finances. Praise the Lord for that. They do nothing else. I'll give you money. Take care of this. Thank you. Some of them are faithful through thick and thin stick with you. So there are different types of destiny helpers. We're not going to get into it. Okay, maybe some other time. But the point at hand is God has placed in your life destiny helpers. Even Jesus, when he was carrying the cross and going up that road to be crucified, the Bible says he dropped due to sheer exhaustion and fatigue. Immediately there was a man who came and helped Jesus carry the cross. Do you know his name? Simon of Syrian, right? Destin Jesus needed a destiny helper. Just in the last ebbing moments of his life, he had to have somebody to lift up the cross with him and make it further. We need destiny helpers. And God has assigned destiny helpers in your life. And I can tell you, because I travel quite a lot, I, my life is dependent on destiny helpers. So the first one is what I'm, we're going to spend a little time on and we're going to close is what I call the systems of this age or the system of the cosmos. I'm going to ask you to go to the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 19. That's going to be our primary scripture for this particular uh, heading. All right, if you got it, can we all read that together? For the honest. All right, it's interesting. Now, who's waiting for who? That means creation is not just the trees and the flowers and the, and, the, and, and the different things God created. It means systems. See, God has created for us things in this world uh, to be able to assist you in this journey to be able to proclaim Christ. He's given you systems. He's not left you alone in the lodge. No, no, no. So one of the systems is what we call the earnest expectation of the creation is eagerly waiting. So or the Christus, whatever that word means, is waiting for you to manifest. All right? Now, if you're waiting for someone to show up, creation or systems that wants to lift you up is already waiting for you. Will you say Amen? Now, even before you can wait for, for things to show up, things are waiting for you. Things are already ordained. And what happens is, if I am not at the right place at the right time, I'm in trouble. The word time is two words, right? What are the, what's the first word in... In, when you translate the word time in the Bible, Kronos. The other one is Kairos. We know that. You can miss it. You can miss this time. Kairos time. God appointed divine time. You can miss it. But watch this please. So this earnest expectation eagerly is waiting for who? For the revealing. Who's the one who's to be revealed? 
the sons of God, right? It's not waiting for children. It is waiting for sons. That's the key. You see, things are not happening probably in our life. It's because we have not graduated from children to mature sons. What is waiting for you? Things that are waiting for you is waiting for the newer version of you. Not the old version. Interesting. Imagine the <clears throat> prodigal son, right? He's having a conversation with himself. And the Bible says at one point he spoke to himself. In the old version is speaking to the new version. He spoke to himself and he said, let me go to my father's house. So inside a person, there's an old version and a new version. The new version is what God wants you to graduate to. Not the old version. You probably could be a believer for 30 long years. But that's not the question. The question is, how you become a son? You're talking about sons, let me give you a very quick analogy. Very quick analogy. During COVID time, we were in Bangalore. And uh, you know, uh, no ministry, no meeting, nothing happened. So my, my take on the whole matter was, the Lord called me to full-time ministry so that I can travel more, do more. Till one time I'm sitting like this and saying, Oh Lord have mercy, no meeting, nothing, nobody invites you. That's why I became a specialist in my YouTube channel in that season. Let me talk to cameras. Long story short, the Lord when I had to minister to me and I, he said, Listen, if you're expecting to be blessed, just because you do multiple meetings, you're no different from a servant. So that means every time you do a work and you get paid for what you do, you're a servant. But he says, you look at your, your, your daughter. My daughter is at the time, you know, eight, seven. And I mean, she has care, she's carefree. She has no worry in the world. She doesn't care if it's COVID. She still wants a KFC and all that stuff. I mean, nothing bothers her. That is the confidence she has in her earthly father. He says, you are no more a slave. You're no more a servant. You are a son. Are you able to grasp what I said? That changed my mind that day right not to say i didn't worry after that but during that season that will give me a relief because now i realize hey now i'm not not a slave i'm a son he will take care of me and i'm, a, I'm about my father's business hallelujah i'm doing what god has called me to do he is going to take care of me end of story now covid has passed and i can stand as a witness to the glory of god he has never failed me forsaken me and all my children were dependents. My wife is a homemaker. So all of them so-called technically depend on me. The Lord has never failed me once. Never once. So now watch this. The earnest expectation uh, of, of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. You must be a son. What is the meaning of a son? The son is the mentality to say it's my father's business. That's all. Who else can the Lord hand over his major responsibility? Not to children, but to sons. Whether you're a male or a female, you're a son in the kingdom of God. So you have been given the responsibility to carry on the father's business. Because I realize at the end of the day, all that is happening is must be translated in the light of the gospel shining in the world outside. It has to translate to that. Anything short of that is not right. Somebody said evangelistic inactivity is disobedience. How are you impacting the world? Not everybody can hold a mic and speak. I agree. But you're a chain in the process. Something has to be done with your life. You have to be counted worthy as a son to carry on the father's business. Hallelujah. All right. Now everybody in the Bible, they have a role. To play let's talk about peter all right uh, you'll find it in the book of uh, luke 5 let's not go there but now peter has been fishing all night somebody say all night hmm. and he, what did he catch nothing nothing by the way nothing has got value as i made a mention right? because you're paying the guys money whether you like it or not right you're paying your workers money and you spend all night time so it's value it's not nothing is not just zero it's got a lot of value by the way, he get he's got all the gadgets necessary to fish, and he's an experienced fisherman. Am I right on that? He knows the ways to fish, and he's a master at fishing. So he begins to put that net whole night, 
didn't even catch a guppy. That story. All right. But now watch it. Scene two. The word in the form of Jesus. Jesus, the word, the word Jesus. He steps on the scene and he says, okay, cast your net. Now listen very carefully, please. Now, Jesus' profession was what? Carpenter. How would you like to receive information from a carpenter as how to fish? You understand the challenge, right? Peter should have said, excuse me, sir. I am a fisherman. You're a carpenter. You're telling me how to fish. So the point at hand is, life will teach you lessons of, for graduation. So the man had to do a very major mindset change to fish during the day. It is going against every understanding of fishing in his life. I had the same problem. When the Lord said quit the airline company, it actually, it's like, you know, a, a thousand thoughts rushed through my mind. How do you manage to survive in Bangalore city without a salary? So used to getting a salary every month, you know, we preach God is good. Praise God. Hallelujah. All that is true. But inside our brains, there's a date which always comes up. 30th, correct? <laughs> the day I quit the airline company, that brain cell died. No more 30th. I mean, so there's a graduation. There's a killing of something and the resurrection of something else. So in your life, there is going to be a lot of killing and resurrection. Graduation from a, from a child. I believe the word child is techno moving across to a mature adult. So life's lessons are life's lessons. Very, very difficult. When you handle situations which you can't explain, remember the Lord is graduating you from this to the next. Praise the Lord. Look at that, that mindset. God, you're graduating me from being a child. A child will get, you know, touchy over every small thing. But an adult will say, it's okay. I'm going to go on further. At the words of Jesus, Peter throws his net in the sea. All right. The Bible says there was a net breaking catch of fish. Somebody say, Amen. You see, net breaking, that means it broke the record. Broke the net, broke the record, broke everything that you see. Now listen, please. Now when the net began to break, there was a divine system at work. See, all the fish earlier refused to go and fall into the net. But when it was divinely orchestrated, divinely ordained, and when he graduated from a child to an adult in his mind, is, is the challenge to his common sense also. When that happened, the fish had a meeting and said, our agenda is to go and fall into that net. That's why I say the system of the cosmos is waiting for, a, for an adult, for a son, not for a child. So all the fish said, our job is to head there. All of them went and jumped into it. Net breaking catch of fish. Do you know that the cosmos is waiting for you to reveal yourself as the son of God? There has to be an Isaac moment. Abraham got the instruction, I agree. But who's the sacrifice? Isaac. Am I right on that? Ah, it's not easy to be Isaac. It's okay to be Abraham in a certain sense. Not easy. It's not my life, right? It's Abraham, Abraham is going to uh, kill Isaac. Isaac's life is a threat. And the man stood still. Today's children would have run off, right? Where's the lamb? You're the one. Off. <laughs> you wouldn't have found him next. Probably you'll find Abraham on the altar. In today's situation. <laughs> Call 911. This father is a murderer. He's after my life. The point is, there has to be a moment like that. All right, let's go to the book of uh, Genesis chapter 7, reading from verse number 13. We're talking about Noah, and we all know Noah had a divine assignment. All right, all of us know, right? So what was the assignment of Noah? Build the ark. And then house all God's creation and take him to the next place for procreation. And that was his agenda. All right, so having said that, the, the speed at which we declared that Noah was to build the ark, I pray that you'll be able with the same speed to tell me your agenda. Ah, big question, right? Noah, agenda, ark. Moses, lead the people of Israel. David, Goliath. 
Me? Ah, I don't know. No, my point is we need to know. We need to know why we exist on planet Earth. We must know. Otherwise, life will become very difficult. You don't know what you're doing with your life. Life will not have any excitement. I'm very thrilled because I know what I'm supposed to do. And I know what I'm called to do. And I'm doing what I'm called to do. It gives me great joy. To be honest with you, right? When you know what you're called to do, it gives you tremendous joy. So again, story of Noah. The Lord gave him an assignment to make a mega ark and, ho and house all these animals so that at the next destination they will procreate and continue with life chapter 2. That's the agenda. Verse 13, let's speed up from there. And on, on the very same day, Noah and Noah's sons, Shem, Ham and Japheth and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them entered the ark. Praise the Lord. First of all, the task was so mammoth, only God could empower it. Am I right on that? Imagine building the, the size of three football fields is the size of the ark. Imagine the, 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 the logistics and the magnitude of that kind of a, a structure. Noah's ark. No engine, no rudder, no GPS, no navigation, nothing. End of the story. This beautiful ark because it was guided by divinity, landed up in Mount Ararat, 14,000 feet above sea level. The pride of man which says this unsinkable landed in the sea, 14,000 feet below sea level. Now who do you want to trust on? After verse, verse 14, and every beast after its kind, all cattle after their kind, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, every after its kind, and every bird after its kind, and of every sort, can you believe this? Now, I want you to think about this. He has made the ark and the animals have to enter the ark. Am I right on that? That's the agenda. Now, where did the animals, where did the animals go to? To the entrance. Okay. Yeah. But to, but where? Location. Decks. Okay. I mean, you're becoming too specific. But, <laughs> but anyway, thanks so much. You must be a teacher. <laughs> Going where? Into the? Yes, that's what. Simple, right? Not requested. Very straightforward. <laughs> no, but there's something within that. All right, the Bible says it went to the ark. All imagine, it is another impossibility to go running after rodents and rats. Am I right on that? Not easy. See, but because you rise up to do what God has called you to do, the systems of this world, the cosmos, is going to align to you, and these rodents and rats and cockroaches and whatever not is going to come because you are an adult. You are a son of God and because you are called to fulfill God's destiny, these things are going to align with your life. But I want to emphasize on this word. Look at this verse 15, verse 15. Can you all read this please at the count of three? One, two, three, let's read. Where did they go to? They actually didn't go into the ark. Okay, hold on. They went to Noah. That's what the Bible says. They went to Noah. See, if Noah was outside the ark, they would have had a meeting outside the ark. You see, he is the center of gravity. He is the center of attraction. He is the magnet. So the man was inside the ark, so they came to him inside the ark. Had he been outside somewhere else, they would have all come, <clears throat> you know, like this Jungle Book movie, all around him. Did you understand? So you are called for greatness. You are called to attract. You are called to do the exact same thing. Because people can recognize this. When people see animals walking towards the ark to Noah, the people should have repented. Unfortunately, they didn't do that. Hope that you will think. Become thinking Christians. Not just praise the Lord, Amen Christians. Nothing wrong with that. But moving on to certain important things that God has called you to do and we're going to walk in that.